cancer survivor is defined by the National Coalition for Cancer Survivorship as anyone with a history of cancer from the time of diagnosis and for the remainder of life, whether that is days or decades. Surviving cancer has a way of changing the way you look at the world. Whatever your individual experience, sooner or later you'll face the kind of practical, everyday issues that accompany life as a cancer survivor. You have to stay positive, don't give up, fight till the end. Because if you give up and you don't stay positive, you can't beat it. It's not easy. <laughs> in fact, they nicknamed me in the ICU. I was there 44 days in the intensive care unit. And they nicknamed me the Miracle Man. Because nobody thought I was going to make it. But you, you can't, can never, it's never over till it's over. You'll be in the company of millions of Americans who, like you, have undergone successful treatment and are now leading vital, cancer-free lives. Maybe your doctor has recommended some changes to your diet. You probably already know that eating well and staying active can promote overall good health. What you may not know is that making such changes may also help keep your cancer from returning. Scientists suspect that the same dietary changes recommended for cancer prevention may also help fend off both recurrence and secondary cancers. This chapter of the DVD contains simple advice that's specifically tailored to cancer survivors. You'll learn tips for making everyday adjustments in what you eat and how you live. So let's get started. Many factors influence the development of cancer. All of us have cancer right now, whether we have it diagnosed or not. Those cancer cells are wandering through our body. What allows us to prevail is an immune system that's on high alert. A healthy immune system needs the right tools to function. After treatment is completed, it's very important for every individual to have a good nutrition and physical activity plan. Uh, first of all, we want all our defenses in place, our immune system, uh, every part of our, every organ in the body you want to have functioning in the best condition possible to make sure that cancer is less likely to come back. So if we don't have, for example, the right amount of vitamin D, which we know is a very important tool for our body because it allows our proofreader genes to turn on. They can make sure that we've copied over our DNA correctly. But if you don't have the P53 system, which we know is critically important to preventing cancer, an abnormality, by the way, which is present in 80% of folks that have cancer, is an abnormality of this P53 gene. What turns on this system? Well, what turns it on? Turns out foods do. So we have a lot of control over food. And what folks don't appreciate is that foods are drugs. They're not regulated by the FDA, but the, our body sees them as drugs. They tend to be very subtle in their action, but our body is designed to respond to the stimulus of certain foods. And when we have those foods flowing through our body as we're recovering from chemotherapy, it'll turn on the machinery to hasten our recovery. The foods that fight cancer and help prevent recurrence contain natural detoxifying compounds. Plus, you want to have the right detoxifying agents in your body, systems that allow your body to clear out elements that could be dangerous. And these include the cruciferous vegetables, those green vegetables like broccoli <laughs> that most folks don't like that we know have cancer-preventing characteristics. We're not quite sure exactly how they do it, but we think that they're very useful from that perspective. Well, in terms of fruits and vegetables, you know, we talked about things like lycopene, uh, the watermelons, guava beans, um, uh, certainly tomatoes. Uh, that are rich in, in you know, citrus fruits, uh, vitamin C. We're about to start an uh, intravenous vitamin C protocol for renal cell cancer patients to see if vitamin C and ascorbic acid can enhance the immune system, which may have an effect in patients with advanced kidney cancer. But I think the motto is stay away from the red meats, stay away from the fried foods, and incorporate more of the grains, whole foods, and, and fresh fruits and vegetables. Maintaining a healthy weight through diet and regular exercise helps discourage the growth of cancer. As you begin to exercise, you'll stimulate the hormones that naturally take your body into an anabolic or building phase. You'll build muscles. Muscles like a furnace. They, they burn up all the calories that you eat. Even between workouts, they're doing that. So you get a double benefit from working out. And that's one of the first things we recommend to folks is to get back on your legs and start walking. In, in many older patients with cancer, when, I, when we say exercise, walking, 
the best thing, you, when you reach a certain age, the best exercise you can do is go for a walk every day. The American Institute for Cancer Research has developed a lifestyle approach for cancer prevention. Their guidelines focus on diet, weight control, physical activities, and personal habits. First, choose a predominantly plant-based diet rich in a wide variety of vegetables and fruits, including whole grains and beans. If you eat red meat, limit it to no more than two or three meals per week. Limit your use of fatty foods, especially those of animal origin, and use appropriate vegetable oils in limited amounts. Limit your use of salt and salty foods. Use herbs and spices to make your food taste great. Limit your consumption of alcohol. No more than two drinks a day for men or one for women. And watch how your food is prepared. Avoid charred meat and limit smoked and cured meats as well as meat and fish that's grilled over an open flame. Finally, watch your weight. Avoid overweight and limit the amount of weight that you gain during adulthood. Regardless of your weight, get out for a brisk hour's walk every day or other equivalent exercise. Cancer survivors attest to the power of exercise to help them manage weight issues. Even, even on a cruise ship, I walked around the deck for three miles. I counted three miles every day. And you know what? It kept my weight down too. It kept it normal, no matter what I ate. When we're talking about obesity, I think it's directly linked to many of the cancers, uh, colorectal uh, and prostate as well. We see that the higher body mass index of patients, they present usually um, with more advanced cancers. They can present with lower PSAs at diagnosis because the more fat you have in your body, the lower your testosterone levels, and the lower testosterone, the lower the PSA. Also now there's quite a bit of evidence that being physically active on a regular basis will help reduce the risk of recurrence from breast cancer uh, as well. Now of course maintaining a good healthy weight and being physically active are essentials for part of an overall healthy lifestyle, but they may be doubly important for someone who's had a breast cancer diagnosis. Studies have linked a plant-based diet with helping to prevent cancer recurrence. Plant-based means eating foods such as vegetables, fruits, whole grains, beans, nuts, and seeds. This makes perfect sense because a plant-based diet is loaded with antioxidants as vitamins and phytochemicals that can prevent damage to DNA that can start the cancer process as well as repair DNA damage. Phytochemicals are natural compounds in the food from plants that provide protective effects against cancer. Researchers have discovered hundreds of these and continue to find new ones. Some people don't like the idea of eating chemicals, but remember that all foods are composed of chemicals. These are very important compounds that can act in a wide variety of ways. And what we're discovering that's very exciting is that they actually seem to not only each have individual mechanisms, but they work best when they work together. And that's why it's so important to eat a plant-based diet where we get this broad variety of phytochemicals that can all combine in their unique ways. One of my favorite nutrients comes in tomatoes. It's called lycopene. Now, one thing about lycopene is if you actually heat the tomatoes up and you mix it with a little bit of oil, it gets absorbed better by the body and the body can use that lycopene more effectively inside for its enzymatic processes. Other examples of powerful antioxidants found in plant foods are lutein, found in spinach, and selenium found in garlic and Brazil nuts. There's an old adage, you are what you eat. Now we're going to take a look at what most Americans are eating and find out why we're seeing dramatic increases in obesity, diabetes, heart disease, and cancer. Let's start by looking at the typical American plate, the typical dinner. Usually it has a large piece of meat on it, a portion of mashed potatoes, and a small tiny portion of some vegetable, maybe peas and green beans. And look at the portion size. The meat is huge. It crowds everything else to the side. This traditional American plate has too much animal protein. Not a good idea because of the saturated fat that goes with it and too little plant food. This plate delivers too many calories, too much fat, and far too few of the nutrients that keep us healthy and help fight diseases and cancer. The bottom line, the proportion of foods on the plate is all wrong. 
For the new American plate, we've changed the proportions. It should be two-thirds or more vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and beans, and one-third or less animal protein. That should make it full of color and variety. When we do this, we're really putting in our corner more and more of those foods that can protect us from cancer recurrence. And at the same time, when we're loading up on those plant foods, that means we're choosing more foods that are lower in calories. And so that's going to make weight control easier. Here are a few tips for making the transition to the new American plate. If you eat red meat, limit it to less than three to four ounces a day, about the size of a deck of cards. Scientific evidence suggests that diets high in red meat increase the risk of colon cancer. You should also limit consumption of fatty foods, especially those of animal origin. Use modest amounts of appropriate vegetable oils, such as olive oil and canola. You don't have to become a vegetarian or give up the foods you love. Just make some simple changes. For example, use meat as a condiment instead of a main course. Try meatless meals a few times a week. Experiment with meaty tasting foods like beans, tofu, mushrooms, or eggplant. Also, let's be honest, most of us just eat too much. It's not just the wrong proportions of food, but too many portions. Eating less can help you maintain a healthy weight and lower your risk of cancer recurrence. So start keeping an eye on how much you're eating. The nutritional facts label on many foods lists the standard serving size. Place the typical portion you eat onto an empty plate, then measure how many standard servings go into that portion size. You may be surprised at how much you're eating. Try not to skip meals. It may lead to overeating at the next meal. Snacking between meals is fine, as long as you choose healthy snacks. But eat only when you're hungry, not when you're bored or lonely. Remember that snack is not a four-letter word. Proportion of foods and portion work together hand in hand, going a long way to help you lower the risk of cancer recurrence. In the frozen food aisle, select unsweetened frozen fruit, egg substitutes, or veggie burgers. Best choices for fresh fish and meats are salmon fillets or steaks, tuna fillets or steaks, or various lean cuts of meat and chicken. Cooking is a joy for many people, while others find it a chore. For cancer patients and survivors, appetite issues, eating problems, and fatigue may make cooking a bit of a challenge. So we asked our chefs to show us how to make a simple meal that tastes good and is healthy. I'm gonna make a great, fun, and vibrant Southwestern vegetable frittata with avocado and salsa. First, I'm gonna heat up my skillet. I want it to be medium-low heat. I'm gonna add one tablespoon of canola oil to this. As this heats, I'm going to explain our ingredients. We've got two eggs beaten with uh, three egg whites, which adds great protein but doesn't uh, give too much saturated fat or cholesterol to our dish. We've got some black beans canned here, which are going to add great fiber. We've got some colorful vegetables. We've got some red peppers diced and red onions, as well as some jalapeno peppers, which are going to add a nice spice to our dish. We've got some cilantro fresh that we're going to add at the end. And we've got some reduced fat cheddar cheese that we're gonna also put on top to melt nicely on top of our dish. We've got a great salsa here, as well as a sliced avocado, which goes on the end to decorate our dish. We've also got salt and pepper to taste. The skillet should be nice and hot now. Just gonna move my oil around to make sure that it evenly coats the pan. And I'm gonna go ahead and add my vegetables. adding the red onions, adding the diced red peppers, the jalapeno pepper, and the black beans. I'm gonna let this saute for about three to four minutes. I don't wanna mash my beans up too much, so I don't wanna let this cook down, and I want my vegetables to stay nice and crunchy. They're ready to go. I like them just like this, not done all the way, still vibrant in color and still going to have a nice bold flavor. Okay, so I'm just going to spread them out evenly and turn this down just a little bit because I'm going to add my eggs now. And I don't want the eggs to cook too fast. I want them to take their time and cook. 
I'm just gonna make sure that I get the egg mixture evenly throughout the dish. Okay, I've just added my egg mixture and I want it to cook for about two to three minutes. So I'm gonna add a lid now and turn it down to about medium low heat. Okay, now the potato's been cooking for about two to three minutes, I'm gonna take the lid off. And as you can see, it's almost set. So I'm gonna sprinkle my cheese on top. Okay, I'm gonna now set this to the side and let the cheese melt. And I've got one prepared already with salsa, avocado slices, and cilantro to give it a great eye appeal. These bold Southwest flavors make this frittata truly unique. Absolutely, it looks great. And by using either soy cheese or reduced fat cheese, it allows you to make this dish really quite a bit lower in fat than you'd ever guess looking at it. Choosing sharp cheese allows you to use just a small amount of cheese and still get plenty of flavor. And you get more protein with the beans providing some plant protein along with fiber and a whole range of nutrients including phytochemicals that are antioxidants and help to control cell growth. And the flavorings in these dishes provide so much more than flavor. The cilantro provides phytochemicals called flavonoids that are antioxidants. The chilies provide capsaicin, which is both antioxidant and anti-inflammatory. And the onions provide allyl sulfides that help to stimulate enzymes that detoxify carcinogens before they can even start their damage. And the whole dish has only 160 calories. Just serve it with some fruit or salad and maybe a slice of whole grain toast. And you've got a whole meal for 350 to 400 calories. And for easy to prepare one pot meals, turn to the New American Plate Cookbook. Physical activity is a proven way to lose weight, rebuild muscles, and regain vitality. By being active, we keep our muscle mass up, which is, gives us the strength to enjoy our daily life activities, but it also keeps us burning more calories so that we maintain our weight, and it allows us to eat more of those foods that provide so many cancer protection benefits. Being active also helps to preserve our bone mass. Here are 10 simple tips to help you get started on a fitness program. One, don't talk yourself out of it. It's never too late to start at any age. Two, turn off the TV or computer and get moving. At first, any amount of activity is better than none. Three, choose activities you enjoy and exercise at a pace you find comfortable. Four, gradually work your way up to an hour of moderate activity a day, plus an hour of vigorous activity once a week. Five, activities can include exercise classes, dancing, sports, strength training, or home exercise. Six, activities as simple as gardening can bring benefits, or incorporate physical activity into your daily activities. Take the stairs instead of the elevator, park further away, do errands by bicycle or on foot instead of by car. Seven, walking is a great way to stay active, and all you need is a good pair of shoes and an hour's time. Eight, exercise in water is beneficial and easy on your joints. Nine, on busy days, you can reach the same level of activity with everyday activities like raking leaves, cleaning windows, walking your dog, or washing and waxing your car. 10. Small gradual changes will keep you motivated, keep your expectations reasonable, and reduce the risk of injury. The benefits of exercise are numerous. Physical activity stimulates the appetite, aids digestion, and regulates bowel movements, all important for weight management. First, when we're more active, that means our digestive tract keeps moving better and we're moving food through our digestive system more rapidly with less time for any cancer-causing substances to create damage. Second, when we're more active, it changes the way our body responds to a variety of hormones like insulin, insulin-related growth factor, and some of the reproductive hormones. These hormones can promote some types of cancer, and so changing their, our body's response to them is very protective. Not only when do we burn more calories when we're more active, but being active is also important to keep our muscle mass. Muscles like a furnace, they, they burn up all the calories that you eat. Even between workouts, they're doing that. So you get a double benefit from working out. And that's one of the first things you recommend to folks, is just get back on your legs and start walking. Weight control may also help fight obesity-related cancers. So if you happen to be overweight or obese after diagnosis of breast cancer, it's doubly important to be 
working on cutting back on extra weight uh, and aiming for a healthy range of weight, uh, even if we can't get there exactly to the target weight, getting as close uh, to that target as possible will be an important goal. The power of physical exercise not only heals the body, but affects our mental health. Many studies show that regular physical activity improves our mental status and our outlook on life and just how we feel. And of course, that's in the end extremely important. Mental attitude matters. The power of positive thinking and a strong will to survive is what keeps these cancer survivors going. The power of prayer and support from family, friends, and significant others cannot be taken for granted. You've got to pray. You gotta want to live, that's the biggest point. If you don't have anybody, you have to want to survive. You have to want to survive. Priority one, I'm alive. Nothing else really counts. Nothing is important anymore. Just to, to be alive and, and also very important was, was um, believe it, you have to have hope. You have to have people supporting you and, and you, have to, you have to have a goal. My goal was my grandchildren. I have to get out of here I have to take them all to Disney World. Cancer research is an ongoing activity, and scientists are working hard to find the answers. We already know that a diet high in vegetables, fruits, and whole grains, along with increased physical activity, can raise the body's resistance to cancer recurrence. Making these lifestyle changes and keeping a positive attitude can help you live a long and healthy life as a cancer survivor. Contact the American Institute for Cancer Research. The American Institute for Cancer Research is at www.aicr.org. New York Presbyterian Hospital offers comprehensive nutrition consultation services. Contact the Department of Food and Nutrition. The website offers news and features on diet and exercise recommendations for cancer patients. Our job is to prevent the cancer from starting, uh, prevent it from spreading and prevent all the problems that come with its treatment. So there is a role for prevention all the way along the line. And there we've seen in our long-term studies that people who have had cancer have overall better survival with good dietary choices that we know will prevent heart disease, uh, stroke, and type 2 diabetes. So the good news is you're at risk like everybody else is from these other conditions if you've survived cancer. Uh, and the, and, but what we see is that we can make a huge difference in our long-term outcome by making the right dietary choices. Several studies have shown that recurrence-free survival improves with people who are eating lots of vegetables and fruits. And there's many reasons for this. When we're eating more of these vegetables and fruits and other plant foods, we're getting more vitamins and phytochemicals that are antioxidants that protect our DNA from damage and help in its repair. Every time I thought of something negative, I thought of something positive. And that's what you have to do. You know, keep your mind positive.